Greetings, uh, my name is Andrew Cox, I'm the lead designer of the Wastelanders, and I'm going to be teaching you how to play the game. Now when you decide that you want to play the game, it depends on how many people you have, of course, but you choose a playing area. Here I've just chosen a table, and the playing area would be from me to the other side. So when it is you, it's time to play a game, you draw four cards for every player. You take a look at those cards, and you put one of those down, and that's where you start the game. So my first turn, I would place this apartment. But you also have to have a person to go on it. And, of course, your people you get from a recruitment deck. So in this turn, the very first turn, I draw a survivalist. So I place him on top of this apartment card which is called a placement, and the survivor, his special bonus is that he feeds himself, so there's no food cost to keep him. Every person starts the game off with five food. So, you know, the game starts, I've got one person on my one placement card here, so I can choose three things. Do I want to recruit another person? Do I want to look for food? Or do I want to look for items? Well, right now, I've maxed on his inventory, which is every player starts off with five inventory per Wastelander they control, and since this guy doesn't eat anything, I don't have to worry about the food that I already have. So there's no point for me to do any food right now or to try to go for any items because you just have to throw them away. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to recruit somebody. In order to recruit somebody, I have to roll a nine or a higher. So I roll this dice, I'm pretending that it's a 9 or higher, and I get another character. In this case, I draw Alex the Veteran, and her special bonus is that any time that she's attacked, or any, other, any of your Wastelanders that you control are attacked, it's plus 1 to defense. So it's like a global bonus for your team. So now I've got two people, and my turn passes, and since I now control another person, I pay one food cost. So I have to discard one of the food that I have. So then it's my turn again, and I draw another placement card. So I take a look and I, you know, I try to decide what I want to do. So I'm going to put this burger place down right in front of me, and I'm going to move my veteran into the burger place, and I'm going to have my survivalist go ahead and look for items. So I'm going to go ahead and try to you know, get another person with my veteran there. And, okay, pretending that it's a 9 or a higher, so I get to draw another person. This time it's another veteran, except this time it's a male veteran instead of a female veteran. And then, of course, my survivalist on the apartment. I go ahead and, and I still roll a 20-sided dice for him whenever you're trying to salvage items. But in order to get an item, it has to be an even number or any number over 17. If it's any number over 17, you get two items. So I roll this, and let's say that I get a 17 or higher. I go over to my little baggie where I've stored all of my items, and I pull two out. And the items that I get are a trash bag and a helmet. So I would take these, and I would go ahead and equip him with said trash bag and helmet, which adds a very slight amount of attack and defense to him and goes ahead and opens up our inventory by three more items. Now if you're interested you can actually buy better versions of these item cards but for the primary edition it just comes with these shards. So then we still have these two people over here. The survivalist already he feeds himself but these two both need food. So I'll go ahead and I get rid of two more food, and as you notice, I started off with five, but now I'm down to two. So next turn, I'm going to have to, next turn is when all my food will be exhausted, so we're going to have to do something about that. So, you know, it goes around again, I draw another card. This time, it's another road. So roads don't really do a whole lot, it's just more or less a way to get from point A to point B. So I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to move her into the road. She can't really do a whole lot there, so I'm not going to do any actions. And I'm going to have my survivalist is now going to... He's got to go to his own spot too, so we're going to go into a bike shop that we put down over here. So he'll try to recruit somebody else, 
and our veteran over here is going to shoot for food. Food is a six-sided dice. So I'm going to go ahead and I get a six. So I come over here to where all the food shards are and I get out six food tokens. And so right now our inventory cap, because of this little trash bag that he's carrying, well, our inventory cap, you know, we don't have to worry about it right now, we don't meet it, and we've now got enough food that we don't have to worry about everyone else. But since we went ahead and foraged from uh, this burger place, we have to put down a famine shard, which means that this location can never be forged again. So we go ahead and we put that down. Now, if you're interested and it's something that you would like, if, if you're not content with something like a shard, you can go ahead and order something like these orange discs instead. It's a, you know, something special that you can get from the manufacturer, but they cost about nine cents each if that's something that you're interested. And they do kind of look a little nicer. But that's not something that comes with most of the games, but it is something that you can get if that's what you're interested in. So, we have three people here, so go ahead and burn two food. And then go around, it's my turn again. So I'm taking a look at my cards, and we've got a hospital. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this hospital with her, and I'm going to try to have her recruit. However, I don't get the nine or higher, so I get nothing from her. And one of the rules is that anytime you lay down a new placement card and go into it, you have to try to recruit on the first turn that you lay that card down, otherwise it's not an option anymore. So it's one of those things to uh, keep in mind. So this little survivalist down here, I'm going to go ahead and have him search for food down here. So I get three food with him. So I collect my three food, and I'm just going to go ahead and put down another famine shard. which is fine. And then this guy right here, I'm going to go ahead and have him salvage for items. So I roll, and I'm going to say that I just got a six. So I get another item. And the item that I got is a hammer. So I go ahead and I equip him with said hammer. So it goes around again, and it's back to being my turn. So I go, I drew a courthouse. So I'm going to move her into this courthouse. I'm going to try to recruit with her. So get the nine or the higher. I recruit and I pick up a leader, which is fantastic. But also because I now control a courthouse, the courthouse's special bonus is that you can draw up to four placement cards depending on the difference between how many you have in your hand and the four that you're allowed. So just let you go ahead and draw more cards so you have a little bit more to play with. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and move these this guy into this playground. I'm going to go ahead and forge, forge again. So I'm going to say that this turn I got one forge from there, but since it's a playground, you can forge that every turn. It never runs out of food unless there's a card that says otherwise. And this guy, he's going to go down to the apartments and try to recruit again. The apartment bonus is any time on return, you can go ahead and try to recruit again. So I try to recruit with him, but nothing happens. All right, we're now on our fourth turn, though. And on our fourth turn, that's when you start drawing event cards. So before you pay food cost and everything else, at the end of the fourth turn, you go ahead and you draw an event card. So the one I drew, it says, shots fired and that it's, I have to equip this to a Wastelander now, and it's basically the equivalent they only have one hand, so they are only able to now use one of their arms. So I'm going to recruit it to, I'm going to equip it to this leader here. She doesn't need to fight anyways. So it goes around, oh yeah, can't forget food, so now it's one, two, three. So I now pay three food. So it's my turn again. I draw another draw another card. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this high school down. And I'm going to go into the high school with my survivor. And I'm going to try to get another person. So I roll and I get an 18. 
So I now get another person. So the person I draw is a scavenger. And scavengers, any time they successfully uh, scavenge for items, they get two items instead of one. So it can be pretty helpful. And then, of course, this veteran, I'm going to go and have him look for items. So let's say that I get one of those. Let's see what, what I get. And I get a rucksack. It's a nice military rucksack. So I put it on the back of the car to simulate being on his back. So he's there. Then we have the leader here and our other veteran here. So the leader's bonus, well, unfortunately, her bonus doesn't matter right now. So we're going to move the veteran back to the hospital and the leader's going to search for items at the courthouse. So let's go with uh, the veteran first. She's looking for items. Okay, so I get two items for the veteran and then for the leader there, I get another item. So total of three items since it was a 17 or hot, which gives me two. <clears throat> and then an even number for an additional one. So I get three items. I get a backpack, a sniper rifle, and a brick. So I'm going to equip the sniper rifle to uh, the veteran. Can't do it to the leader because she's missing an arm. I'm going to go ahead and put the backpack on the veteran as well. And then the leader over here is going to get the nice red brick. So then, yeah, I go ahead and I, I get another uh, event card. And this one reads, Liberal Second Amendment. Choose one. I can either ban guns, and guns cannot be used by my faction, and it, increased, uh, it causes an increase of attack and defense for all other items that I control, or I can keep the guns, and I can equip this card and pretend that it's a gun that does a lot of damage. I... I'm going to go ahead and keep this card. So I'm going to keep guns and I'm going to equip it like it is a gun to this guy over here. My little uh, scavenger. So go ahead and pay my food costs again. My food costs are getting a little higher now. So you can see the little pile I had over here is now down to three. So go ahead and I'm not going to do anything about that that turn. Okay. So we go around. It's my turn again. I'll draw another card. So I'm going to put down two cards this turn. The first one is the subway, so I'm going to move her into the subway. Now, subways all connect to each other, so you can travel from one subway to another. It's a way to go around the game. So I'm going to put her in a subway, and then I'm going to put just a road down here so that these two guys can progress a little further and get closer to her. Because part of this is, you know, I'm playing unofficially with another person, and as it is that you get items, you're trying to eventually get to them. You know, yeah, you're, you're trying to be the last one alive, more or less. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my leader now to the hospital. Since she's at a hospital, I can go ahead and remove this right here because it's something that's wrong with her. You know, she's been healed. So I go ahead and I discard the card. So all my people do that, and now I'm going to pretend that no one forged this turn or anything. So I'm going to pretend that, yeah, that no one forged this turn. So as you can see, I only have three food left, but I have five people left. And of those five, one of them can feed himself. So he doesn't account for this sake. So I have more people than I can feed. So since that's the case, I burn all the food I have left. And now I have to pick who's going to die. So in this case, my scavenger, Mr. Matt, is the person that I have to discard because he has starved to death. So I discard him. And then, all right, so it goes around again. Take another card. All right, so this turn, I'm putting down this water tower. And the water tower sniper rifle bonus is fairly potent. The equivalent 
is that with a sniper rifle, you can shoot anyone with two spaces in between you. So if there was another person playing right now from the top of that water tower because of the bonus with the sniper rifle, I could kill this other person on the other side. So to simulate attacking, I'm gonna say that my veteran here is attacking the medic over here, the unarmed medic. So my sniper rifle already gives me 10 attack. So I take that 10 attack I have and I add that to the four I just rolled on this 20 sided dice. So together, you know, that's 14. So 10, four, 14. So I do eight attack here. Well, my medic starts off, all characters start off at one defense. And whatever their total defense is, you times that by a six sided dice. So this medic being unarmed has only one defense. So rolls a nice six, you know, maxed out, but one times six is only a six. So the medic is killed and they get discarded. Yeah. And that's kind of the way the game goes. You're, you're trying to kind of span out. You, you, you want to get your items, your defense. You have to manage your inventory. You have to manage your food and you have to manage your people and be cognizant of who took a turn, who has and like, what do you need? all while trying to get to the other side to eliminate the other player before you starve to death. And for some people that's easier said than done. You know, it could be, for instance, on one of my first turns I put down a playground, which would have meant I could have stayed in this little section right here and just continually salvaged for items while having all the food I needed because I could just salvage from the park or forge from the park over and over. If you're in a game like that, then it becomes a lot more important to be aggressive rather than defensive because somebody already has a position of strength like that. And if you just let them sit back, they will be able to get all those items and never really have to worry about food or having to maintain a proper uh, wastelander to food ratio. So, you know, if you're interested in playing, uh, you can go ahead and buy it from the Game Crafter. We have two versions available, a starter edition for $16.99 and then the Deluxe Edition for $49.99. The Deluxe has a lot more cards, a lot more people, and a lot more components, and includes the item cards that are about three times the size of this. But if you're interested, look it up. You can find us on the Game Crafter or like us at facebook.com slash thewastelanders2048. Thanks. Here we have kind of what your own city could look like. Because the Wastelanders, at its heart, is a game of exploration. It's, you know, card drafting, and then you put the tiles down as you want them, and you go from there. So it doesn't have to stick to any kind of strict pattern so long as they connect. So if you take a look at all of this, this is kind of an example of just how big and epic your game can get. And the only thing that really can cap you out is how many placement cards you have. If that's something that you're interested in, just having a big, drawn-out game that can cover an entire table, we do offer our placement cards in separate booster decks. Just like we have our placement cards in extra booster decks, the same, too, do we have with our recruitment deck, which has quite a lot of people in it, so that you have the numbers to go ahead and take advantage of all our city has to offer. So this is something that you're interested in. I can say that it's fun, it's a blast, and it has mixtures of worker placement, strategy, war, a little bit of the post-apocalyptic, but it's not, it's not really crazy about it, though. It's, it's part of the theme, but the biggest theme here is just taking back the city and not starving. So, well, that's all I got. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.